In today's video, I'm going to cover the top seven cybersecurity stock based on performance. And if you're familiar with the channel, then you already know that I have a spreadsheet down in the description with these companies and several others that I used in researching this video. And if you're curious if cybersecurity is going to be a hot industry to invest in, the latest projections have cybersecurity growing at an annual rate of 10.5% each year for the next four years. But seeing as how there are approximately 3.4 billion malicious emails sent every single day and damages from global cybercrime is expected to grow at 15% a year with an estimated cost of $10.5 trillion, then it's no surprise that cybersecurity is a very hot sector for growth. And it's also a great area to get a job if you're thinking about a new career. Throughout today's video, I plan to review each and every company, then I'll cover their stock performance, and then I'll also list out the ETF or the exchange traded funds that have the most exposure to that specific company. And as a little bit of a tease, I do plan to launch a video next week with the top cybersecurity ETF based on performance. I'll get started with the first cybersecurity company of Cloudflare, which is a global cloud platform that offers network services to businesses. Some of those services include Zero Trust Firewalls as a service, where it inspects and services every connection for an office setting, data centers, and remote employee connections. They also provide Zero Trust SIM, which is an eSIM designed to secure mobile devices and prevent SIM swapping attacks. Now, when we look at the performance of this stock, it isn't the consistent best, but the year-to-date is off to a great start. But even more importantly, the five-year CAGR or compounded annual growth rate is over 46%. And please keep in mind that CAGR means that it averaged 46% every year for those five years. And if you're interested, I am listing the top five ETF or exchange traded funds that have the greatest exposure to the Cloudflare stock. So in this case, the Wisdom Tree Cybersecurity Fund has the largest exposure to Cloudflare with it making up 6% of that fund. And if for any reason you feel that I'm not leaving the ETF on the screen long enough, then just remember that I have all of this information listed in the spreadsheet down in the description below. That's right, I have spreadsheets for most all of my videos where I share out all of my research. It's okay to get excited and think to yourself, holy shiplap was such a great trend. You know what else is great? Pressing that like button so that my channel could continue to grow. And if you want to be up to date with news on investments, feel free to sign up for my newsletter down below. On to the next company of Palo Alto Networks, where they've been around for 19 years, where they've carved out a nice little niche in firewall protection. And because of that, they tend to be at the forefront of next generation firewalls or NGFWs. They also offer a cloud-based security platform called Cortex, which is their comprehensive security platform for organizations. They are clearly seen as experts since 85 out of the Fortune 100 companies rely on their services, where they are serving over 80,000 organizations globally. Now, when we look at the stock performance, it is sort of low at the year to date and the one month is horrible, but long-term, it has been a great performing company. And before I talk to the recent drop, I'll list out the ETF with the greatest exposure to Palo Alto, where most each ETF is specific to cybersecurity. Now I wanna take a step back and I wanna discuss the drop that happened in performance. It happened in February when they announced that their full year revenue projections were planning to be less than analysts predicted. Palo Alto referenced buyer fatigue and spending money on cybersecurity despite the fact that threats are growing more than ever before. Some are speculating that companies are juggling their IT budgets and they're cutting some areas like cybersecurity so they can spend a little bit more on AI and automation. I think that there's a few different ways to look at this. First being that maybe this is a good opportunity to buy the dip with Palo Alto, or maybe some of those Fortune 100 companies are looking to reduce their costs and they're gonna be switching over to a cheaper option from some of the smaller cybersecurity companies, which means that some of those smaller players may see even greater growth than already planned. This may be good in the short term for some of those companies, but if Palo Alto begins to lose too many of their customers, then I could easily see this sparking a pricing war in the cybersecurity sector, and that may hurt all of the stock. For that reason, I'll be watching their quarterly earnings very closely here over the rest of the year to see what direction the sector is going to take, which is all the more reason to consider ETFs for cybersecurity investments if you are risk averse. But in transitional periods like this, the market's just too complex for a risk-free strategy. But avoiding corporate drama and volatility for some of your portfolio can be relatively simple by investing in traditional assets such as fine art, and you can protect and grow your portfolio at any size by investing in art with our sponsor at Masterworks. 
UBS market data showed nearly 40% of ultra high net worth collectors allocated around 30% of their entire portfolio to art. Masterworks has acquired over 300 works from legendary artists like Picasso, Banksy, and Monet, where they've exited 21 offerings with annualized net returns of 14.6, 16.4, and 17.6%, and even more. Today, over 900,000 people have signed on so far, with popular offerings selling out in minutes. But my subscribers can still get access to these legendary collectibles by using the QR code here on the screen or going to the link down in the description below. As with any investment, past performance is not indicative of future returns. Investing involves risk. Now on to the next company of CrowdStrike, which happens to be one that I've spoken to about in several other videos. CrowdStrike has helped to pioneer cloud-based security, where their Falcon platform is built entirely on the cloud, offering ease of deployment and scalability for all sizes of companies. They also utilize a single agent architecture, meaning that it's an all-in-one package, unlike many competitors that offer multiple types of packages for different solutions. CrowdStrike has also been pushing their use of AI in threat detection and analysis, which enables them to be at the tip of the spear for threat detection in real time. They also publish an annual report on the state of cybersecurity, which I do highly recommend reading if you have the time and if you're interested in understanding a little bit more about the hotspots for global threats. And when you look at their financials, they have blown up year to date and also at the one year. Granted, the three year was a little bit of a dip, but this is a company that has a lot of growth ahead of it. In fact, they just released their quarterly earnings a few days ago and the stock jumped nearly 20% due to their beat to the earnings per share. Now I'll make certain to showcase which ETF have the most exposure to CrowdStrike, and I'll be curious to see if any of these make it on the next week's video on the top cybersecurity ETF. Today's next company is Microsoft, which we all are very familiar with and some often forget they are a juggernaut for cybersecurity. They have a dedicated cyber defense operations center and a detection and response team, also called DART, that helps protect their Microsoft customers. Similar to other cybersecurity firms, they also offer cloud security via Azure Security Center and their Microsoft Sentinel to safeguard and monitor for security insights and events across the company's IT infrastructure. They're also large enough that they work to help drive cybersecurity policy where they can. Not only is Microsoft a key force within AI, but they're also a very crucial part of cybersecurity. And when you look at the stock performance, it is no surprise why most everyone has this in their portfolio, since it is, in my opinion, a no-brainer for sustained growth. Now I'll move on to the next company of Fortinet, which has been around for over 24 years. And like CrowdStrike, they offer a unified platform called Fortigate, which is a central hub for monitoring security functions across an entire organization. But given their age in this sector, they have a large group of Fortune 500 clients that rely on their expertise. And when you look at the performance, they've been consistently doing great. And I wanna remind you again that the five year is the compounded annual growth rate. So they average 32% growth each year for those past five years. And when you look at the ETF list that carry Fortinet, there are several that are popping up consistently amongst the group. Now I'll move on to our next company, which is CyberArk Software, which has a very different spin on what they do. They are the global leader in privileged access management, where they offer a suite of solutions dedicated to securing and monitoring privileged accounts, credentials, and secrets, which are all very high value targets to attackers. Their goal is to minimize risks and future threats by tracking all credentials within their internal infrastructure and blocking any potential liability or threat from compromised credentials. Seeing as how 98% of cyber attacks involve tricks of manipulation from social engineering, CyberArk software protecting user credentials has a lot of future potential. And in looking at their performance, it's also doing quite well. And I love that they have their own niche that is very different from many of the other cybersecurity companies. And here are the top five ETF based on exposure to CyberArk, where there are a few different ETF listed on this one that aren't exactly on all the others. And now I'll move on to today's last company, which is Broadcom, which has been around for over 30 years, and they work in several different areas, not just cybersecurity. They are heavily known for semiconductor design and also offer software solutions for data center management. But as a company, they've been making a major shift into cybersecurity space over the past few years. Specifically, they acquired Symantec Enterprise Security in 2019, and they also just acquired VMware for $69 billion, which has been a powerhouse for cloud-based computing. But with regards to cybersecurity, 
They mostly leverage the semantic solutions for endpoint protection as well as email security and data loss prevention. Broadcom seems very strategic in their acquisitions, and they are hitting on some of the key growth areas such as AI, semiconductors, and cybersecurity. And when you see their performance, you're going to understand why. They have consistently been on fire over every time frame. This is one of those companies where I make certain to buy it any time I see a major drop in price. To put that into a little bit of perspective, their 10-year CAGR or compounded annual growth rate is at 36.4%. But when you look at their total price return across those 10 years, it's 2,077% growth, which would have turned $50,000 in 2014 into $1.1 million today. I'm not gonna lie, that is an investment that I wish I would have made 10 years ago. But I still believe that there is a lot of opportunity to be had with this particular company. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have a spreadsheet listing all of these companies and more, along with their ETF by exposure down in the description below. And keep an eye out on next week's video on the top cybersecurity ETF.